We've had five days, this being the last of talking about hiatal hernia syndrome, and today being the final day, yesterday I talked about treatment for hiatal hernia syndrome from the internal aspects of it, as far as the gut, hormones, etc. Today I want to talk about the final piece, which is treating hiatal hernia sy syndrome structurally. Um, because as you know, if you have it or you've been following any information about it, what happens internally, of course, is, is the, the gut is out of balance, the hormones can get out of balance, uh, liver function, there's a lot of uh, internal organ um, malalignment that can happen, not necessarily disease, but malfunctioning. However, along with that, because you're, you're talking about the, the stomach spasming and pushing up on the diaphragm, the diaphragm getting elevated, the stomach in spasm, it pushing up, the heart getting impacted. Um, there's a, this structural change that happens with that diaphragm where because of that pressure from the lower abdomen, the gut causing increased abdominal pressure, as well as the stomach spasming pushing against the diaphragm. The diaphragm can't freely move anymore. The chronicity of that or how long that's been occurring uh, when you start working internally and taking down the inflammation in the gut, the diaphragm doesn't necessarily just bounce back and get back in the right position. It has to be structurally worked on. So when we evaluate someone for the physical aspect of hiatal hernia. We're looking at their how they breathe, how their ribs move, how their diaphragm moves, how uh, do they have tenderness around the diaphragm, around the stomach area. We're looking at the uh, function of the nerves in the neck. Uh, why? Because the nerve that goes to the diaphragm comes from the neck. We're also evaluating the vagus nerve. Now that's a cranial nerve, uh, so you're not touching it because it's deep in the, in the body, but you're evaluating its function. And that's very key because the vagus nerve actually connects to the nerve that goes to the diaphragm, and the vagus nerve being imbalanced can create a lot of the, the heart palpitations, the panic attacks, and um, the overall sense of I just can't function in life the way I used to because I just don't feel right. So it can be the shortness of breath, the heart palpitations, etc. So evaluating vagus nerve function is actually a structural component um, that, that we do as part and parcel of eva evaluation and then of course treatment. There's a muscle in your body called the psoas muscle, and it begins with a P, so it's P-S-O-A-S, but the P is silent, so psoas is how it's pronounced. And the psoas muscle is actually a low back muscle, low back going into your hip. However, there's parts of it that tether and hold down your diaphragm. The human body is so incredible. Uh, so we're evaluating that. So we're evaluating hip function and low back function all associated with hiatal hernia because all of these things can get imbalanced by having hiatal hernia syndrome. If you've been in this arena for a while, you've maybe heard of a pull down, a stomach pull down, and that's something that doctors of chiropractic can do. And people say, wow, I got good relief, but it didn't last, it didn't last. And you know, we're all about root cause here, meaning getting to that deeper root cause and really fixing it. So what can happen with that pull down, as it's called, is it can kind of release some of the tension between the stomach and the diaphragm. And all of a sudden, the diaphragm's happier and you go, wow, I can breathe. I've had people just burst into tears when we've done that because it's like, they'll say it's the first deep breath I've taken in I don't know how long. And, but it, why doesn't it last? Because there's, there's more components creating that problem. So if you do a stomach pull down and you release that tension, but the root cause of the tension is, is the gut, and all the inflammation and the imbalanced nerve function and muscle function, then again, you're just, it's not gonna be long lasting. And that's, that's what we're all about here at Root Cause is it's gotta be a long lasting actual solution. Now, is that the case all the time? No, but in a great number of circumstances, 
a very high percentage, especially with hiatal hernia syndrome, this can be fully resolved. And I've had people say, oh, you know, I just drink a big glass of water and I get on my tippy toes and I bounce down on my heels and then my stomach feels better for a few hours. And, and that's true, that can, that can work for some people. But you don't want to be doing that the rest of your life because that's just symptomatic. It's not getting to the root of the problem. It's not resolving the problem. It's certainly not negating and correcting the problem that the, the digestive tract has that's, that's creating all of this. So we really want to, that's why we work from the inside out, which is what I talked about yesterday, but then we're also working from the outside in with the structural aspects of hiatal hernia syndrome. And more often the internal is, is more um, a higher percentage involvement than the structural, but everybody's different. Some people can have a little scoliosis of their spine, a little curvature of their spine, so it's pulling on the diaphragm a little differently, so they have to learn certain exercises and maneuvers to do just because structurally they have that and there's nothing you can do about a scoliosis, but you can be smart and know certain stretches and certain maneuvers, as I said, to kind of keep that area moving well and not so, not so stiff. And then we do this evaluation and we do the treatment over Zoom as well as in person, which sounds odd if you've ever been to a physical therapist before. Uh, this is more in the realm of the physical therapy, but the chiropractic aspect of it is from a getting an adjustment Obviously, that's not done over telemedicine, but we will help you find a chiropractor if that's required and work in concert with a local chiropractor as we're doing what we know how to do very expertly, which is get that diaphragm moving again and all the attendant nerves, muscles that needs to be balanced. And a lot of doctors of chiropractic are obviously not trained in this. It's kind of a newer field. So. Um, that is how we evaluate and treat the structural side of hiatal hernia syndrome. There's a video about to come out which shows a patient going through the process of the evaluation so you can get an idea of how that's done over telemedicine or, or over a Zoom visit. Uh, we certainly perfected this over the pandemic by necessity, uh, but since then it does definitely allow us to treat people who are not local to us, including those who are international. So. Um, please send me your questions regarding this week and all the topics we went over or all the facets we went over of hiatal hernia syndrome. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this information, please subscribe to the channel and uh, tell others.